In this first look demo, we're going to take a glance at the upcoming Windows Server 8 operating system promised by Microsoft later this year. And specifically, we're going to take a look at some of the familiar administrative tools like Event Viewer, Performance Monitor, and Task Manager to see if we can spot any improvements. So let's take a look. From the Start menu, we do have access to a few things by default. Task Manager is one of them. We'll open up the Task Manager utility and see that, in fact, it has received quite a, a facelift uh, and, and really to, uh, to our advantage. Okay, Now, if you ever open this up and you don't find any processes, you simply need to hit a, uh, a details view. You notice that one of the biggest things, which may in fact be more applicable to a client machine, but still useful here is that it groups applications. It shows me Windows processes. It's one of the biggest problems with machines is not being able to necessarily identify what is a Windows process and therefore required for uh, to be running, what are background processes, and what are the applications uh, that need to be uh, need to be there. So no more, you know, no applications tab, just a processes tab. Okay? And they are automatically grouped by type. Now you don't have to do that. You can filter. If you don't group by type, then they're just all there. Uh, but the group by type is really a, uh, a very handy, uh, handy thing, I, I believe. Okay? You click on an individual process, you can right click, you still have uh, access to the same things. Uh, the resource values in memory, uh, we can show percentages or actual values. Now, the actual values are, are somewhat helpful. So, you know, it's tracking them based on CPU usage, memory usage. You can raise or lower that um, uh, and, and, and see, uh, or pick, excuse me, I lost my train of thought there. Pick which one you want to, to look at. On the performance tab, we've got the performance utilization. Now, besides just looking a little bit different, uh, we basically have the same thing here. The CPU utilization, you know, shows me the speed. It's a little bit more utilization, the number of processes, threads, handles, uh, the actual number of processors, and even some information about L1 cache. Also shows me if it is virtualized, uh, if virtualization is disabled on this machine and or if it is a virtual machine, which in our case it is. Shows me the total uptime. Memory utilization, we still have uh, the kernel memory uh, versus the uh, standard user memory. Ethernet, we see uh, activity there. Now the reason that's kind of going crazy is because I'm actually connected uh, via a remote desktop session. So there is quite a bit that's going on on this system over the, the network. And we still have a link, it just looks different, to open up Resource Monitor, which largely is unchanged. This is essentially Task Manager uh, you know, with, some, with a lot of extra capabilities. And that just means a lot of extra information. You know, because we can select on individual processes, we can see, if any, the services related to that process, all the associated handles, uh, all the associated modules, system program or uh, system files th that would be used, all the DLLs and things. And so this is your process explorer almost capability. Uh, memory utilization, you know, the same thing. So really resource monitor doesn't appear to have changed much. And this is a very, very helpful uh, monitoring utility. Now back to task manager, again, at any point if you want fewer details, in fact, that I had done that before. This is the default view when you open it up because I'm not running any apps. So you click on more details and then you will get uh, the changed view there. Okay, so performance has uh, CPU memory and uh, Ethernet. Over on users, we'd see the current users. You can expand this. This is especially helpful on a terminal server machine. And you can see the individual processes for that specific user. Uh, the details, you know, all the services and executables uh, that are running, and you've got, uh, you know, the ability to go to the specific service, so it'll run over here and highlight the services that are being used by that service host. So we can see specifically what is being done. Um, we can 
Uh, we have a, the option to search online now for a specific service, which will attempt to open up uh, a, a search. I'm going to see the results of that. And the search is searching for that service. Okay, kind of telling you exactly what that service is doing or if there are any known problems. And so that can be, uh, that's a very helpful addition as well. So all in all, Task Manager has incorporated some changes. Uh, we can see some new capabilities that are built in there that are uh, beneficial to us. How about other things like Event Viewer? Well, let's right click and say we want to view all apps and we'll open up Event Viewer directly. Event Viewer, on the other hand, doesn't really appear to have changed much at all. Still based on XML, uh, still have the concept of custom views, which is going to show me a filtered view of events based on a role or a, a custom view that was created. The Windows logs, you know, you still have the same information here. You right click, we can go to Event Properties, see information about the event. We can attach a task to the event, which was also in Windows Server 2008. That gives us the ability to you know, potentially choose to start a program or send an email or display messages. You still have all the applications and services logs, which are numerous and can help us locate a specific event. So uh, again, as I see it, and we're not dealing with the final release, but as I see it, uh, there don't appear to be any differences with the event viewer utility. How about performance monitor? So we go into Performance Monitor, we'll go to the All Apps again. And this is not the only way to get to this, but Performance Monitor also appears very, uh, very much unchanged. Besides the addition of some, uh, some counters, there's not a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of additional options. Okay? Uh, now there are a few you can go through and uh, we'll add a couple of options here. Let's see. We do have some new counters and, and objects. That's always going to be uh, the case. So let's use paging file utilization and let's grab uh, memory Oops. just as a for instance. Okay, we'll add that. We'll do some logical disk as well. Let's see, the read write time will be a good one. Okay, so we'll add some counters in and then we can see those values begin to, uh, begin to be tracked. And, and we can right click and choose to scale uh, the selected counters, which scales them uh, together, makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to measure them. Uh, we can save the image, we can save these current settings um, and, and save that in the format of a web page just to, to send. But that, that stuff is all basically the same. You still have the concept of data collector sets. A data collector set is something that uh, you can add. Um, actually, I should go here. Oops. Something that you can add which will track uh, the uh, potential counters, event trace data, system configuration, and performance counter alert. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess around with a bunch of stuff that does, hasn't changed because of, this, of these three primary utilities, Task Manager appears to be the one that has encountered uh, the most change uh, that we're going to see on server uh, Windows Server 8. So, you know, although all three of those utilities are very useful, Task Manager seems to do some, some nice new things that uh, give us a little bit more benefit than what we had before. That completes the demo where we looked at some of the most used administrative tools to see the changes in Windows Server 8. Thank you for viewing our short demo video. For more information on K-Alliance's e-learning videos, please visit us at www.kalliance.com or call us at our U.S. toll-free number 1-800-330-9111.